Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast, also video cast, also live feed. Feel a bit overwhelmed <laughs> with all this stuff going on. I'm really excited to have uh, to be interviewed, uh, Joe Valenti. Uh, half Italian, is that right? Half Italian, that's right. Did yeah. I get the pronunciation right? Good looking half. Oh, yeah, yeah. Valente. <laughs> Valente, great. So you probably know who Joe is because he won uh, the most recent Apprentice. I want to say thanks a lot for taking your time. I know you're a busy man. So, Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, great. Thanks for coming. Good afternoon, on. destructive entrepreneurs. <laughs> 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 All right then, so let's get straight in then. I want to yep. sort of um, just really dive in at the deep end. Fantastic. Why do you think you won The Apprentice? Um, I think I won The Apprentice because I think that Lord Sugar could relate to me. I think he could see that I'm somebody that's going to be a very, very hard working individual that really wants it, that can deliver, yeah. um, you know, and that I gave 100% in every single scenario on that show. Mm -hmm. Every single task, even if I didn't know what I was doing each time, I always tried to learn and adapt and, and take on every situation. Yeah. And I think he could see that, you know, and mm -hmm. I think um, I think he may have made the right choice. Well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you think you were the best at everything on the show? Or do you think that he's not necessarily looking for the best, he's looking for someone who can try their best, even if they're not the best? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I was the best at everything, but I was the best all-rounder. Um, I think I was the best at being able to deliver on a number of levels, yeah. you know, from endurance, from listening, to be able to control people, to be able to deal with my customer and, you know, and manage the whole situation, I think. And I think in business, from what I've learned, you don't have to be a specialist in every subject. You just know, you just have to know how to put those people together yeah. and manage those people. And then that's how you get the best results. Sure. Were there... Did you play any games? You know, you like trying to play people off against each other, one up a bit, a bit of competition, any strategy? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's what other people try to do, but I think my main strategy was to deliver. Yeah. It was to do what Joe could do best every mm -hmm. single time, and if I gave 100%, whatever situation it came down to, I knew that I could justify everything that I'd done. Yeah. Whereas other people get it mixed up. They start to focus on how they can bring somebody else down, right. not yeah. how they can excel. Like politics at the moment, basically. Yeah, exactly yeah. right, yeah. 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 So it's not you know, it's not how they can excel, they try to bring other people down, and that's mm -hmm. where they, they fall apart. Yeah. So, um, do you, if I get, a lot of people ask me about, oh, Brexit, yeah. oh, what's it gonna do, and oh, it's a long time in the property mm -hmm. market, and oh, my competitor's doing this. Um, Sounds like, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like you're basically saying, don't worry about what everyone else is doing, you have a plan, you stick to your plan. Yeah, exactly right, yeah. yeah. You know, and out of every bad situation comes an opportunity. Sure. You know, somebody else does something wrong, then you can you can um, yeah. capitalise off the back of that, and that's the way I see it. Sure. So you, you, you didn't get drawn much into, because I used to watch every show, yeah. I didn't watch every show you were on. Um, yeah, no, well, Thanks, mate. <laughs> if I know, I'd have done that. Peter <laughs> yeah, I know. I was definitely fighting your corner, yeah. being a, a local guy. But um, yeah, because sometimes I can imagine you just sitting there and someone's just talking stuff about you and you just want to be like, what are you talking about? Shut up. Yeah. You know, you were able to sort of stop the temptation where you were worrying about the games that other people were playing. I think what you've got to do is basically just. Um, just be accurate and don't bullshit, yeah. um, you know, and just go straight in for the points of what you've done right and what they've done wrong. Yeah. And, you know, people do get drawn into to arguments, but Lord Sugar hates that. Yeah. As soon as you start to sort of bitch and argue, he gets yeah. fed up and he just won't listen to what you say. Yeah. So I learned from probably the first show or the first episode to get your information out clearly and concisely and don't waffle right. and don't talk if you don't need to. Yeah. Don't get involved in bitch arguments, just deliver. People like that just want key information. They want to make their decision and they want to move on. Which actually is a really good tip generally in business, isn't it? Yeah. You know, when you're dealing with big ones, because you know, um, Lord Sugar came and spoke at one of our events. You yeah, know, yeah. I've, I've been involved in working with him. I remember the first time I met him, and it was like when you were talking, it's like you had a quarter of a second to get your point yeah. across, otherwise he's like gone and in Yeah, things. exactly. Because he's probably got a million things to think about. Yeah. And do you think sometimes people make that mistake when they're sort of, you know, maybe looking to raise money or get mentors and... They waffle and talk around things. And yeah, I, I think that's very, very important. And I think you know sometimes when you're trying to when you're trying to sell a dream, you go too much into the detail and you don't give the key bits of information. Yeah. If you're looking for an investor, sometimes they just want to know. Okay, it's a good idea. 
it's the right numbers and then let's do it. Let's not yeah. go ahead and just sell yeah. something that's, you know, at this moment just a dream as it were. Yeah, because I mean, obviously you known you from before. You've yeah. Just sort of, you know, not, not really well, but known you and obviously you've known of us and I've always felt that you're very much to the point and mm -hmm. matter of fact. Do you think that's important? Yeah, I do, yeah, because I'm just, I just like the information and I, and I don't bullshit myself. Yeah. You know, when somebody talks to me, I just want to know what, what the point is and, yeah. and just get on with it rather than just beat around the bush. Do you think that can come across a bit hard sometimes in business? If you're just key information, facts, sales? Yeah, yeah. and I think I learned a big lesson on that show. And one of, them, one of them was the time when we did the property task, actually, and we mm -hmm. had to go and pitch to the people that were the big developers. Yeah. I went in there thinking that we were guaranteed one of these people to let us sell their property. And for me, I went in to try and see how much I was going to get out of the situation. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realise at that time that I needed to show a little bit more interest in what that, what that um, client needed. Yeah. You know, and then we ended up getting the, um, getting the developer we didn't want, which, sure. which made us lose the task. So I learned a lesson that sometimes going straight in isn't always the right way. Yeah. But most of the time it is. Course, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, totally. So, how much did you try and work out what Lord Sugar wants and what he's like, and, you know, and try and be that and deliver that when you're on the show? How much did I try and work that out? Yeah. I mean, I worked it out pretty much from day one, and yeah. then I tried to follow it from there. Yeah. Like I said, no waffling, straight to the point. Yeah. Don't get drawn into other people's arguments. Yeah. Don't bring down other people yeah. just for the sake of bringing them down. Yeah. If somebody did something wrong, I'd pull them on it and just yeah. be straight and obvious. Yeah. But I didn't ever try and discredit what they'd done to try and make myself look yeah. better. Yeah. It was always about you know, looking good because I deserved to look good. Because yeah. I was proud of what I delivered. Yeah. Not about making somebody else look worse so I look better. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I used that technique yeah. from pretty much the first day when I realised, like you said, when you met you know, you get 30 seconds. If you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I say, oh, Lord Sugar, yeah, this happened, blah, 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 blah. I can't finish with you now. Yeah. Right, you talk next. Yeah. So you just say the sentence. Yeah. He doesn't care about hellos, goodbyes, how's your day been. Yeah. You get the information across and you shut up. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, I'd really like to, to sort of dig into that a bit because um, I think a lot of people, when they see people like that, mm -hmm. they think that's these people being rude mm -hmm. or blunt. They don't get how many diary appointments, how many meetings, how many companies they're trying to juggle, how many media appointments they're trying to juggle. And so I think if you can look at it from their point of view, they must have a load of meetings and they must have a load of information and a load of advisors, short, sweet, to the point. I think yeah. they probably, because you know, a lot of people have an opinion of Lord Sugar. I've met him, you've met him, a lot of people haven't. And I like the fact that kind of what you see is what you get and yeah, yeah, how yeah. he's on screen is how he's off screen. Yeah. Because a lot of people aren't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think if you take the time to think, okay, so how's, what's this person's life like? Mm -hmm. You know, like we're supposed to do this at 10, you're busy, you get called yeah, out, yeah. can we do it too? Yeah, we can do it too, because mm -hmm. you're busy, I don't need to be a dick about it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly right. And you know, they're, they're trying to process, like you said before, so much information, mm -hmm. they only want the small chunk that's yeah. valid. Yeah. They don't want everything else around yeah. it, you know? And yeah. it is, it's hard, it must be, it must be crazy. Yeah. You know, my small little empire that I'm building on at the moment, mm -hmm. I struggle to find time. Yeah. But then you look back when you had one or two people working with you, I used to struggle to find time then. Yeah. So yeah. as you get bigger and bigger, you always seem to struggle to find time, but you mm -hmm. always seem to make time. Mm -hmm. and the more people you get around, you obviously help out because it takes a lot of your stuff away. Yeah. But like I said, the guy's got so much information, how do you process all of that? Yeah. And it is by being short and sharp. Yeah. If you wanted to give everybody as much attention as you possibly could, you'd never get anything done at that level. Cool. So, um, can we pause a bit for the, from The Apprentice? Yeah. Talk yeah. about you a bit? Yeah, yeah. Just in case people don't know the history of you. Obviously, they've seen you on TV and yeah, stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. So, how old are you? So, 26 now. Wow, man. Yeah, 26. Yeah. Nearly and... 27 in September. And you started your business before The Apprentice, did you? Yeah, started when I was 22. Okay. Yeah. And the business is? Is Infragas. Okay. Uh, it's a plumbing and heating business. Portland yeah. installation company now. Yeah. Um, we, we started to install boilers all over the UK. Yeah. Um, we're basically experts in, in that one sector. And you've got how many staff now? So 16 staff. Yeah. Yeah, we should have around 20 by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're just growing and growing, growing by county and, and just 
delivering yeah. that customer service and delivering what we say we're going to deliver, and that's the most important thing. And why did you set up that business? Why did you get into that? So bringing it right back to the beginning, when I was 15, um, I was at school and I weren't getting on very well, I couldn't learn in an academic environment and ended up getting expelled. So then after that, I needed an opportunity um, to... What did you get expelled for? Uh, it was just a number of different things, really. Uh, I didn't like being told what to do. <laughs> probably the most important one. Which probably makes you a good entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. short attention span. Right. Um, wasn't yeah. able to sit and listen for very long. I wanted to get things done. Yeah. You know, I don't like a massive amount of instruction. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just hard. I couldn't ever see the point of being taught things that I was never going to deliver in the, in future life. Art, I couldn't draw. Why are you wasting an hour of my time a day yeah. making me go to art or learning yeah. about RE or you know it's always good to get the base bits of primary school but then I don't want to know any more about that yeah. put me into something that I can excel in yeah so then anyway it was just all of that and I wanted to be out of school couldn't stand it yeah. so I was gone yeah. um, and then basically I was 15 and I was thinking right what am I going to do now yeah. then, then it, the reality 15 hit home. born in Peterborough expelled that's <laughs> not a good start yeah exactly so I had one way I could go down with the rest of the people that I knew yeah. or I could go up yeah. Um, you know, and I, I always knew I was going to go up. I never, I knew being expelled from school was only a minor, yeah. a minor thing that was going to happen. Yeah. The day I walked out of there, worry about me, my mum going yeah. out. You ain't got to worry. I yeah. said, I promise you. Yeah. And then, um, you know, from that point, then I didn't. I needed to create an opportunity, mm. and I was stuck. I was out. I had nothing to do in the daytime, so I approached a local plumber who I knew was my best friend's cousin. He'd just turned twenty-five, and he'd started his own business. Um, and I said to him, there's no way that he's not going to let me go and work with him if I offer my services for free. Yeah. I had the whole of year 11 to kill anyway, so yeah. I didn't have nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. So I went to him and I basically said, look, I'll come with you every single day for free, okay? And I need you to teach me as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. and, f and if you do that for me, I'll give you 100%. I'll come every single day and deliver, and then you give me an apprenticeship at the end. Yeah. Okay, so I went with him, went every single day. I was never late, always wore my uniform, always polite to customers, completely different to what it was like at school yeah. because I wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. It was something I was interested in. So I went with him, and then um, he put me through college. Right. And then time went on and on and on. Then from 18, I got qualified as a qualified plumber. And then at that point, my um, my boss at the time, he was paying me 35 quid a day. Basically, I wanted 60 quid a day. Yeah. He said, no, I'm going to give you 50. So I'd been two years on real shit money, 80 yeah. quid a week. And then he said, no, so I quit my job, yeah. took out a six grand loan and went and studied on a gas course. Right. Um, after that, was 19, qualified gas engineer. All of a sudden, I was making 30 grand a year, yeah. working in London. I'd had a flat, a car. So at that point, I'd done really, really well. Yeah. You know, from where I came from, mm. Um, then two years into plumbing and heating, I got bored and I thought, right, I've done all my gas qualifications now. Yeah. Decided to go off to Australia, um, went out there for six months, partied, had a great time, really enjoyed life, experienced it, mm. um, got a lot of that stuff out of my system. Then came back and then needed needed something else to um, to sink my teeth into, yeah. and I got back into the same job. So. I got Lord Sugar's autobiography for Christmas, which I spoke a lot about on the yeah, show. Yeah. Read that for three weeks straight. Yeah. And then I'd always had this spirit inside me and knew what was